field. That one's called to the right. Hunter on the move. Racing back. It's over his head. It's gone. It's into the bullpen. This game is tied. This game is tied. David Ortiz. David Ortiz. David Ortiz. This is Red Sox Beat on CLNS Radio. I think it would be a big statement if John Farrell started Travis Shaw on opening day, and I'd be totally cool with it. Because I think it would, it, it, if that doesn't give Sandoval motivation to, to play better defense and play better, period, nothing will. I think they're going to make Jeter that first unanimous vote, and I hate that about baseball writers. If you belong in the Hall of Fame, you get voted in the Hall of Fame. Achievement or a new milestone. So don't just be like, hey, we, we signed this player, we're going to have a ceremony. Like, no, no. Like Now, to your hosts. All right, Red Sox beat CLNS Media, the leading online provider of audio and video coverage for your Boston Red Sox on Twitter at Red Sox underscore beat. Facebook, Red Sox beat podcast. Your Boston Red Sox are division champs. AL East took way too long to do it. Way too long to do it. Uh, of course, you can follow us on Twitter. Facebook updates into the playoffs. Don't forget to follow CLNS Media on Twitter at CLNS Media. Facebook search the same thing as well. Um, Guys, final record, 93-69. and 69. Very happy the loss total ended up being 69. I'm an immature child like that. And look, this team is going into the playoffs. They win the division back-to-back times for the first time in franchise history. Nothing to slouch on, right? We've made a playoffs a lot, you know, wild cards, things like that. You took control of this division. You only needed a couple wins this week to do it. And it, mind you, they did it in two wins. And guys, it was a stressful week. I, for a second, I thought they were going to choke it away, but they didn't. And they won the AL East. It was very stressful. I was on the edge of my seat all week, especially on every night when they could have clinched and they just didn't and they waited to the last minute to do so. But I mean, it was a very successful regular season, 93 wins, AL East title again. Um, It's just, it's a great time right now. I'm extremely happy. Yeah, it was good. I mean, it's with everybody was kind of going insane. You included Jared with, uh, with Nick on your podcast. You guys were freaking out and on the round table, you were freaking out that, they were going to lose the division, and I was sitting there listening and thinking about how you guys were fools because that was that would be really hard really to hard blow. To blow. They know? almost did. I mean, they almost did. They did, but they didn't really because they still they they had a two and five week and they still won by two games. And you got to lose every game. It's that wasn't happening. So they secured it. Did take way too long though. You're right. It did take way too long, but they did it. They did it. The uh, AL East Champs was good because now they don't have to play the stupid wild card game. Uh, Yankees will play the Twins on Tuesday. Rockies play the Diamondbacks on Wednesday. And then our series starts against the Houston Astros, another week of more Astros baseball. Uh, in Thursday, on Thursday in Houston, game is 4.05 first pitch. And then Friday is 2.03 or whatever it is, 2.07. I don't even know. Um, 2.05. So you have two games there and then back to Fenway Park. But um, guys, Obviously, this is an end of the season show before the playoffs start, so we'll obviously get to the playoffs. See how we're going to talk about that. But we have a lot of we have a lot of baseball that happened this year, ups and downs, peaks and valleys. So we do want to take a look tonight at the bold prediction article that the, the written team wrote earlier in the year, uh, and I'll have Jess take us through that because he knows that a lot better than I do. He knows that article like the back of his hand because uh, he put that thing together. And then um, we'll, we'll kind of go into other things as well, plus do some predictions with the matchups around the around around the league, but. The league, but- Let's start with let's start this, with team, this team. team, and let's start with the biggest disappointment this year. I think there's a lot of things that went positive, a lot of things that went negative, and let's start with Lauren. Lauren, I know you're always Miss Sunshine with this team, but there had to have been something on this team that you look at, you look back at for the summer and go, you know, that was kind of unfortunate. And can we leave Pablo Sandoval out of it? Because <laughs> I, I, everyone's going to have that as an answer, and that Lauren, I don't want to use that as a cop-out answer, so let's leave Pablo <clears throat> Sandoval out of it because we kind of all saw it coming. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's the easy answer is Pablo Sandoval, and we don't need to go into why. Um, I think I'm going to go with Stephen Wright because, I mean, I forgot he was on this team until today. I don't know why he came into my head, but I'm like, he was pitching really well um, despite the knee injury, and then his season just kind of ended abruptly, and it, we realized he needed surgery, and it, it's kind of disappointing because I love the knuckleball pitchers. I love me a good knuckleball. And like I said, he was pitching. He was pitching pretty well until he re-injured that knee and or no shoulder, and just kind of fell apart. And it was. I mean, I was really looking forward to seeing him pitch because he started off strong and he pitched well last year. And it was somebody who wasn't even supposed to be on this team last year, and he came in and just was dominant. And then had high expectations this year, and just kind of 
fell apart. I remember when I went to Baltimore to see him, I'm like, this is going to be as a, like the game that makes him or breaks him. And ultimately, it was the game that broke him. I just remember he gave up like two runs, and I'm like, oh, this is it. This is absolutely it. And it's just he had no confidence because once he started getting battered, it was just he couldn't – he had no control. So I think – as much as I want to say Pablo Sandoval, I'm going to say uh, our good friend Stephen Wright over there. I don't like to call people out, but I'm not sure what season you're thinking about because he was awful this year. He wasn't he was that great. bad. He wasn't terrible. It was just I think it was more the injury was an issue. Uh, I mean, his ERA was 8.25. Well, yeah, I but I wouldn't it, call that good. It's not good, no. But we, he, he, he gave was... up. He gave up four runs, eight runs, one run, four runs, five runs in his five starts. And the fact that, that I think, I think the worst good. part is that he only had five starts than anything. So yeah, disappointing. Seriously. It just lingered from last year's stupid running injury. God, awful. And he was so, so, so good last year. Yep. And he was like the biggest surprise last year, and now this year he's the biggest disappointment. It's hard to believe that he was, like, could have been a, he like could have been the start of the All Star game up to like two weeks before the All Star game last year, and now we forgot that he even existed. I I forgot too. I forgot he was yeah. on the team. I, I I think everyone I think everyone did. It's fair because look, he he was going to be a prominent piece if he was healthy. Um, I think he just never got a hundred percent from that injury. Hashtag fire Farrell. Uh, but look, you know, at this point, you just kind of have to hope that he comes back and um is healthy next year because you're gonna need him. Yeah. Oh, my dick. Now nah, I'm not you go, Jared. Who's your biggest disappointment? All right. Um, I'll, I'll, that's fine. Give me more of an opportunity to talk here. So, look, I think that there's a couple options in my head. Um, but, and me I was, too. That's I was, why I asked you to go. I'm thinking Rick Porcello, <laughs> but I think that's an easy out. For me, I think I'm going Tyler Thornburg because this guy came over, traded for the mayor of Ding Dong City, you know, all these expectations. We needed some relief in the bullpen, and this guy didn't even see the mound this year. Um, the doctors for the medical team here at the Red Sox situation kept saying, yeah, we're still evaluating him. So he was laying on the table for six months. They didn't know what was wrong with them. And now they, they waited so long to let him go. But this guy is supposed to be good, and he can be good. He saw what he was in Milwaukee before they traded him. So, look, I don't think right now, obviously, the Brewers won that trade. And, you know, maybe Thornburg comes back next year and, and pitches well and gets healthy. And that's where signs are pointing. But, I ultimately don't think you can win this trade at that point because Travis Shaw is just phenomenal for the Brewers, and that's what you needed. You needed what he's doing in this lineup, and if he was still here doing what he's doing out there in a Red Sox uniform, you would be better off because we, we're talking about it every week. He, this team needs a bat. This team needs a bat to be able to hit in the middle of the lineup because Hanley is the furthest thing from being clutch, and you know all these kids are young, and they have, there's not a lot of power on this team consistently because you lost David Ortiz. And there hasn't been a replacement for that. Travis Shaw was supposed to be that guy. And so, to me, seeing what he's doing out there and Travis Shaw being under the knife and being hurt all year and not seeing the mound once, it has to be Tyler Thornbreak for me. Yeah, that's fair. That's a good one. Another forgotten man, for sure. Oh, yeah. Because how can you remember a guy who never pitched? And people forgot about Carson <laughs> Smith until he came back. <laughs> like I know. But, see, people didn't forget about him, though, because you were expecting him to come back for, like, two months. And then he finally did. And you're like, Yes! Tyler Thornburg, Thornburg is just like, who's that? <laughs> <Never>. <laughs> yeah, I'm having trouble with this. Part of me wants to say Hanley because he sucks, but on the other hand, that was kind of ex- I kind of expected that to happen. I even, well, I mean, my one of my bold predictions, which we'll obviously get to, was that he did 13 home runs. He did better than that, but he had a horrendous average and no RBI. So I'm not going to go with him because it's too easy. I was going to say Rick Porcello until you shamed me jared saying it was too easy so <laughs> i want to go with him because i was expecting a lot out of him this year so i guess i won't go with that so i think what i'm going to go with is uh, matt barnes on the road not matt barnes period even though that's close because his numbers overall aren't very good either say his matt numbers barnes aren't great <laughs> right but they're not terrible but matt barnes on the road was somebody absolutely garbage he was so bad in the roads the ra was over five and he kept getting put into games on the road, and he kept doing terrible. Obviously, part of that's on John Farrell for continuing to pitch him. Obviously, that got easier when reinforcements came with Reed and Smith and Price. But I'm going to go with Barnes on the road just because it was just 
so many games that he either gave up three base runners and then came out with one out, or gave up two runs, blew the lead, came in and gave up insurance runs. He just couldn't get outs on the road. And it, it blew a lot of games. And for a bullpen that pitched as well as this one did, he was kind of the sore thumb that continued to get beat up when everybody else was pitching well, which is disappointing. So that's kind of the dark horse. Definitely bigger disappointments for Porcello and Hanley for what you expected from them. But Matt Barnes on the road was just garbage yeah and, and we've talked about this a lot but it doesn't even make sense because like it doesn't change like unless you're that mentally weak what right. changes and your mechanics aren't changing because you he there were nights where he pitched like one night on the road and then like two nights later came home same situation and would would suck and and, and you know it's, it's just one of those things where i don't understand what the difference was it, it had to be a mental thing i don't know if it just doesn't like being shamed or being like booed or whatever it may be but it had to have been a mental game Oh, yeah. I mean, I hated every time he was on the road and he would just be put in constantly. It was just he got chance after chance. And it was so frustrating, especially if the game was on the line. It, he always blew it. It's like, why is this guy getting all these chances when he just continues to prove time and time again? He just sucks. And he kept getting put in in situations when it was like close games, late in the game. He's like, yeah, well, you know, this guy wasn't available. So we put Matt Barnes. I'm like, yeah, that's the last guy you want to put in on the road in a close game. I don't care if so, I don't care if Addison Reed wasn't available. Figure it out. Someone else can go in. Don't let don't let Matt Barnes go in. Yeah, it's just such a weird thing with with how different he was in the at home or the road. Because you know, you guess people sitting here like, yeah, pitch Matt Barnes in the playoffs only in home games. It's like you don't see that very often where you're begging for a guy to pitch only in one, you know, one one place than the other. You're like you yeah. never pitch him on the road. Like that's just weird. That it, with relievers, you just don't see that very often. No, you don't. And so look. There are, there are you know, there's other options, you know, like I said, Rick Porcello is kind of an easy one to talk about. Hanley's an easy one to talk about. But I think those are good ones because there are guys that had expectations. You know, Thornburg was supposed to pitch and he never got on the mound. Um, and, and, you know, there's other situations that this team went in. But there were good things as well. So let's shift over to positive side of things. And this is where Lauren shines the most, uh, being positive about this team. So let's talk about, you know, biggest surprise this year. And I'm just going to let you start this one because there are plenty of options. And I have an idea in my head, and I, and I think you might be annoyed with my answer, biggest surprise. But, uh, Jess, who, who out of this team kind of surprised you the most the way this year wound up? Um, I'd say my biggest surprise, besides Chris Sale being even better than we expected because he started off the year so incredibly that even more of an ace than you would have expected him to. Obviously, he fell off a little at the end. I'm not going to go with him. I'm going to go with Mitch Moreland because he was – awesome and i know that there were some expectations of him coming here they were like this guy's a good player you know he's hit 20 home runs several times in his career he's a gold glove defender so i knew that he, you could expect him to be good but just coming here on a one year deal and kind of being like the replacement for hanley when hanley wasn't playing mitch moreland had a way better season than hanley not even a contest well yeah his expectations were on the field like he wasn't supposed to hit the way right. he did he came up right you know, he, I mean, he earned the nickname Mitchie Two Bags for a reason, but like, he, he came up in the clutch in, in so many situations at the plate that that wasn't even what his role on this team was supposed to be. Exactly. He was just supposed to be a gold glove defender to basically fill in when Hanley couldn't play. Instead, he played first basically every game and <laughs> wore himself out and just did everything. Yep. And, you know, his average was 246, his, but his average has never been good. 22 home runs, 70 and 79 RBI. Those are both close to tops of the teams because there weren't a lot of home runs on this team and not a ton of RBI either, really, if you look across the board compared to other teams. Yep. So his offense was awesome. His defense continued to be good. And like you just said, Jared, the clutch, walk-off hits, important hits, game-tying hits, he had a lot of them. He, yep. he was really solid clutch and pinch hitting. He had a bunch of pinch hit hits. He's the best pinch hitter in the last three years. So he really came through in a lot of different ways. He was a lot of fun to watch. Seems like a really nice dude. Seems like a really good dude. So I don't know if necessarily it was the biggest surprise in the world, but I can pretty much guarantee that he did more than most people expected, and his season was extremely good. So yeah. I'm going Mitch Moreland. Yeah, no, it's a good one. Um, and just I think it's, a, it's one to talk about because he's got an important role coming through the playoffs too, right? He's got now a conversation where he's going to have to play a lot and he's going to have to be that clutch guy to be a team like the Astros and, and moving forward. So. Definitely glad he played well this year outside of his normal defensive responsibilities. Um, Lauren, I'm going to let you go because I'm torn, and you might answer my answer for me. So, uh, Lauren, you can go. I, I I was torn between two, but the only reason I'm not going with my second choice is because of how little he pitched in the bullpen. 
So I'm going to go with uh, Drew Pomeranz. Yep. Because I, I, oh, I certainly didn't expect the season he threw this year. I don't know if you guys did. <laughs> Just did. Player Just to did. watch for. Go back. He, he was he was your player to watch for. March 2017. I, I don't think anybody would sit here and be like, yeah, Drew Pomeranz is going to have the same amount of wins as Chris Sale in the same season. Um, and he just, he really surprised me this year. He was somebody where I'm like, I don't think I have a lot of trust in him. Um, you know, the whole injury debacle with his trade or whatever it was. Yeah. And it was just very he was ba- pleasantly. No, he, he was bad. He was bad. Well, he, he, was he was bad, hurt. but but now you can clearly tell he's healthy. You can tell he's going to be one of our really, like, big people in the playoffs and I never thought I'd live in a time where I'm like, Oh, Drew Pomeranz is going to be the number two starter for the Boston Red Sox yeah. or possibly number. Th- and it's, it, I, I had no idea that he was going to have a season this good and this solid. And he really became kind of like a strikeout machine too. He was striking out a lot of batters. He was getting deep into games. He was winning games, which was obviously very important. So I'm I'm going to get mine to, to good old Thomas Andrew Pomeranz because I just, <laughs> I was just blown away because I'm like, I'm ready for this guy to suck. And yep. he did the exact opposite. So I got a lot of love for him this yeah, year. Look, and I'm on the same boat. I think Jess is one of the few who predicted he would do this well. Um, can, and, I, can I read what I said? You my can. article before yeah. you go, Jared. Thank yeah. you. Please do. I, I got I to gotta boost myself up here. March 23rd, clnsradio.com, Jess Thomas. <laughs> last, last two paragraphs, last two and a half paragraphs of my article, I said, for 2017 outlook for Drew Pomerantz. I said if he stays healthy and pitches like he did last year in San Diego, it would help the team tremendously. I have faith that he will stay healthy. I believe that he pitched fairly well last year, minus the home runs. So if he can just attack the zone and keep the ball in the park, he should be able to have success this year with less pressure on him with the big names on the roster. It seems from reading what people are saying about the big lefty, there isn't a lot of trust or faith in the guy to get the job done. So I'm taking the opposite opinion. I think he's worked past his elbow issues and will be a solid and healthy contributor to this rotation. Oh yeah! Boom! And look, and you're right. You know, it was, it was the keeping the ball down, and it was. I think the expectations weren't there, and I think that was helpful. That was huge, right? You bring in Chris Sale, Porcello's coming off the Cy Young, who was a disappointment this year, but you know there was expectations on those guys to pitch well. Erod was coming in looking to do well. Stephen Wright was supposed to be one of the guys who came in. You know, Palmer was, was supposed to be a four or five in the rotation guy, and that's where we pitched, we pitched him to be throughout the entire year. And now all of a sudden he's your number two, no questions asked. And if it wasn't for Chris Sale being Chris Sale, you'd probably make an argument for him being number one. So it's, he has many wins as Sale did this season. Exactly, exactly. So he absolutely so, would be. And I, and I think part of that in, in Sale's defense um, for tying him with wins, I think part of that is Sale is just Sale is terrible at the end of the year. Um, and if he had a couple more good starts, he, I think Sale was the best pitcher on the roster this year. Um, should, potentially yeah. could have won Cy Young if he didn't crap his pants. <laughs> second half of the year but um now i think coming in the playoff time i'm not worried about that either but um look drew pomerance is a great one that that was part of why i was torn because he was one of the ones that i was definitely going to bring up but i think for me um biggest surprise is rafael devers guys this kid literally is someone that how old is he even i don't even know he's 20 20 20, 20 years yep. old this kid has no nothing but stones below the belt like he literally has come up in big moments. He's hit clutch, clutch hitting. He looked a lot better defensively than most people have given him credit for too, because that was a big knock on him. Everyone knew he could hit the ball, but it was defensively that they weren't sure if he could sustain it. And now with Nunez not being a hundred percent, he's been playing a lot more too, and he's going to be very important. And I think he's going to be very composed coming into the playoffs. He's he's shown a cool head on his shoulders this entire time, and he's fit right in. He's hit big moments. He's had he's hit home runs after base hits, and it just. This kid has been through the minor league system, and, and he came up in a pinch. They, they needed someone there, and, and he's filled that void very nicely at third base after what happened with trading Travis Shaw, Sandoval being a crapshoot. Um, look, I think that's one of the best candidates I can think of because of what he did at age 20. Kid can't even drink yet, and he's already leading this team to the playoffs. I think those are three great choices. I think between Devers, Pomerantz, and and, uh, and Moreland, I think we probably I think we probably cover the three biggest surprises this season honestly yep i think you can't i think those are probably if you ask most people i think those would probably be their top three okay so out of those three then i think we're on point out of those three who's the most important for the playoff push oh totally drew pomerantz yeah absolutely no I, I agree I, was, yeah. I wasn't sure I, I think they're all very important because that you know the offense has, has been hit or miss but i think the way the pitching has been you need those top two guys in sale and pomerantz to be very good or you're screwed because I don't the rest trust... of the rotation is shaky enough that you have to have the two of them. Yeah, so 
I don't know who's starting game three. I think it's all going to depend on how game one and two go because if you're up 2-0, you're less afraid to throw Erod than maybe Porcello or vice versa. Um, if you're down 2-0, maybe you throw Pomerantz or Sale back out there uh, because I don't trust anybody else um, in the tough situation. Now, um, there's a lot of options you can do. Um, I know there was one talk out there that if you're up, if you're down 2-1 in game four, you can pitch Sale on three games rest and then Pomerantz would be on full rest for the last game if needed. So there are options there to avoid the end of the rotation, at least for this series, if you really have to. But, um, you know, let's just hope that Chris Sale comes out and dominates on Thursday because he's most likely going up against Furlater. That's what it sounds like. So yep. going to be a low-scoring game, in my opinion. Um, if Sale comes out and pitches the way he we expect him to pitch, um, and, and same with Furlater, we'll get to that series in a little bit because we've seen the Astros way too much in the last week. Um, so, But we'll get to them a little bit more after. But I think those are good. Um, so for you guys, out of everyone that we've kind of talked about so far, um, who was the most entertaining player this year? I think there's a lot of good options here uh, between great defensive plays, you know, big bats, pitchers, things like that. Best, pl- most entertaining player, most fun player for you to watch this year. Uh, let's start with Lauren. Andrew Benintendi, like no doubt. <laughs> he's he's just been, it's been so much fun. Like I just feel like he's grown into such like a confident young man and a confident baseball player. And you really see it with just, I mean, the plate patience is still there. That's only going to get better. He's made some outstanding catches. He's really come in clutch. And he's just, he's so much fun to watch. Just his speed, his nonchalant throws from left field to home plate, just getting people out. His flow. He's just, he's, of course, the hair. You can't go wrong. It's, it's, he's everything that you want in a baseball player. And he's only 23. So if we can lock this guy up for a long time, like we're going to have a lot of Andrew Benintendi to watch over the next 10 years at least. And he's just somebody who's, He was born to play baseball. He was made to play baseball. And he's had an incredible rookie season. This thing is like, this is his rookie season. This is his first full season with us. And he's only going to get better. So I I enjoyed every minute watching him. Yeah, it's funny. I was scrolling through the roster when I was thinking about this question. He's the one who popped off the page to me, too. Honestly. Can't go wrong. Can't go wrong with that. I'm not going to go with him for this segment just because you did, but (laughs) I probably would have picked him, too. Yeah. (laughs) I think he's a consensus number one, just the way he plays the game. Yeah, he just had a lot of fun. For this specific question, who had, you know who was the most fun to watch, he was fun to watch. So. Yeah. <laughs> Jared, do you want to go next? You want yeah, me to go? I'll go. Um, so, like you said, Amanda, you're gonna pick. yeah, that's fine. So, like, Ben Attendee, I think, you know, is an obvious choice because of the way he plays. Um, for me, I think it's Christian Vasquez this year. Yes, I knew that. Um, I, knew um, that. I that. <laughs> everyone, so cool, everyone man. knows I'm a big Vasky kid. <laughs> um, Jess clearly knew it. It was coming. Um Look, this kid is someone that I was preaching over and over again, even when Swihart was playing last summer. It was, Vasquez is your future. Keep watching Vasquez. He's going to get healthy. He's going to come back. He's regained his arm strength. No one can run on him. No one's safe running on Vasquez. I think that was the most fun. Is the excitement he brings when he throws somebody out is fantastic. The fist pumps, the energy. When someone strikes a guy out, he fist pumps and running back to the dugout. Like That guy is a leader, and I think eventually he could be – a lot louder version of Jason Veritek in terms of that leader, that guy. I don't know what role Blake Swihart has on this team, but Vasquez is your starting catcher for the foreseeable future, in my opinion, because of the way he plays defense, the arm he has. And when he hits a home run, he pumps it like nobody else. He had like four this year. But every home run he hit, it was full thing, pointing out the bad at the end of it. And that dude has energy. And, and in my mind, he's pretty close to watching baseball with Andrew Benatendi for entertainment value because that dude is just an excitement, and I can't wait to watch him in a playoff series. Well, it's funny because he had f- only five home runs, yet they were all huge. They they're were either massive. like game time, like Walk game off. winning, go ahead. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're all huge, and he got so pumped. You know, it's, it's really funny. See, when I was scrolling through the list again, <laughs> he was the other one that popped out of me, and I was like, I know Jared's going to say him. He loves <laughs> it. Sure enough, man, you, you were right. He was great. He was so fun to watch. He's 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 his hitting. All yeah. hitting three hundred, the home, run, the important home runs, the great catching, yeah, so much fun. He's the, he's the, he's the next jer- both... he's the next jersey purchase for this guy, Christian Vasquez. Oh yeah, I think that's safe. I think it's definitely safe. So because you two both said the two that I was going to say, I'll go for a third person because why not? There are a couple other good but, ones but, on the roster, so there's no really wrong answer. There are. Those are the two best. I'm going Craig Kimbrell. Love it. Ooh, I like it. I didn't think Kimbrell. Guy, to be honest, I didn't think of Kimbrell. Yeah. I did, because, holy crap, he struck out half the batters he faced this year, which is insane. Unbelievable. That's really hard to do, 
as a club. He had so many strike. He had way over 100 strikeouts as a closer. That's incredible. Just watching him pitch, the electricity on his fastball, you know, the fist pumps when he got the win, just the sheer domination, knowing that he's going to come in and get the save 98% of the time, 99% of the time. That was really fun to watch because unlike last year where he was shaky, too many walks, this year he was on point all year. He knew exactly what he was doing, and teams just were cowering in their jeans. I think it was fun too. I I think it was fun too because this is what you know Braves fans saw forever. Like we we knew Kimbrel was good, but like you know watching him come, you know he was um, wasn't great. Obviously last year with inconsistencies, but we were watching him pitch on an every night basis, and this is what we we knew of him in Atlanta. That fastball guy who just dominate everybody, and now I understand why Atlanta Braves fans loved him so much. Right? He's just it's just exciting to watch. Everyone can make fun of the quirky arm motion all you want, but like Papelbon had the stare down. We all love that too. So it's just this guy has stones, and, and like he's going to be fun to watch in the playoffs because he knows he's been there. He knows how to handle it, and he's going to be fun to watch. Hopefully, he can shut down the Astros if he's needed. But um, he's the anchor of this bullpen all year, and he's fun to watch. I mean, yeah, oh, he was so much fun. He was, he was the best closer in the league with the Braves, and he's the best closer this year too. Yeah, yeah, he really redeemed himself after last season, and he every. Every time he came out, it was just electric. Even what, like, even just watching the games, whether you were at Fenway or watching it on TV, he was. It, it was just so electric, and it was so much fun. And yep. I love the little the quirky arm motion. I absolutely love that. And it's just, yep. <laughs> <laughs> we're all just kind of doing. I'm it just right gonna now. do the rest of the show like this. <laughs> <laughs> if, we, if we were on video, I totally would. We're not doing video this week. Totally yep. Hold it. But yeah, no, I I love I love the choice of Craig Kimbrough since he was. He's so dominant, and I'm so glad we have him. Yeah, and there are a lot of other choices, too, for this, right? Because you can go around it. You know, Mookie's always fun to watch, especially the last half of the year um, when he started to tear it on. Um, there's other Duke options. Nunez. Duke Nunez, who was J- phenomenal. JBJ. In. JBJ's doing well. Um, some of the pitcher, you know, in the bullpen. It's just there's options, but I think those guys kind of nailed it down for me, and I'm always going to support Vasky because he's just phenomenal. But um, we, we do want to revisit the, um, the bull predictions article. We're going to do that in a minute, but there's one more topic I want to talk about because – He's gotten a lot of heat from me over the years, um, and he's gotten a lot of heat from a lot of people. Not those two across the glass from me, but uh, it's John Farrell, good old manager John. Um, I'm still not a fan. I still think he should be fired. If they if they lose, if they get bounced in the first round, his job might actually be in jeopardy. Let's be hundred percent honest, uh, because that's two years in a row if that happens. But um, overall, it wasn't as bad as last year. I will give him that. There there were a lot less questionable choices, but now it's just getting contradicting. Uh, because he, especially with the price, the way he's handling David Price, um, Price has been phenomenal out of the bullpen. I support the decision. I still wish he would be healthy enough to start Game Three. I still think he would start Game Three if he was healthy enough. I, I believe he's just not his elbow just can't handle it. But he's been dominant out of the bullpen, and I think that's going to be a huge role for him. But to, now John Farrell's saying, well, now I don't want to use him back to back nights. He's used him like three out of four. I don't want to use him mid inning. I'm not going to put him in the mid inning. No, then he puts him in the next night after he says that in the middle of the inning. The dude just contradicts himself, and I just think I just wish he would talk before he said stuff out loud because I don't think he realizes what he's saying, and then he just does the opposite because he doesn't remember what he says. I don't think he's a good manager. I, I, I'm I'm still fully on board of the fire Farrell train. The best thing in my eyes is if they won a World Series and he still gets canned. That'd be fantastic. Um, <laughs> but do you guys see the inconsistencies that he does, or are, you, are your John Farrell blinders still on? No, I mean my my John Farrell blinders came off a while ago, um, and I hate saying that. Like I love the guy. We all know every week we're on here. Jess and I just kind of backing him up. But, you know, I, I, I always said, like, he makes questionable in-game decisions um, dating back to the whole Stephen Wright thing. But, you know, there's – he, when people say he's not a good manager, I, I, I understand why they say that. But at the same time, he's won back-to-back AL East titles, 90-plus wins. He's won three AL East titles in, during his time here. He's not a bad manager. He just makes crappy decisions. And – some of them come back to bite him in the ass, and sometimes they just work out. And a lot of the times they go against him. I understand that. I mean, I'll sit here and say a hundred times, I don't, I don't get why he puts Barnes in. I think it's stupid. I hate that he puts him in constantly, especially on the road. And but at the end of the day, the Red Sox are ALE's champs again under John Farrell. <laughs> They've gotten ninety plus wins again under John Farrell. And I don't think. I mean. If they get swept out of the first round, yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of questions about his job. But other than that, I think he's I think he's secured for at least another season. Yeah, and, I, and see, the only thing I hate about that argument is the fact is 
and I, I know of this too, too, is like, you know, they, people say, oh, well, he won a World Series with us. Yeah, he won a World Series because the roster did it. Like, he had nothing to do with that. They shouldn't, they had no business winning that World Series. And the last two years, I think they've won despite his bad decisions. You know, when they got Addison Reed, he was all about, he's my eighth inning guy, he's the eighth inning guy. And then he goes and puts Matt Barnes out and says, well, Addison wasn't available. He didn't pitch for like two days. Why didn't you put Addison? Why wasn't he available? And then he just pits the next day magically. Like little things like that, that, you know, change the outcome of a game. I don't trust John Farrell to manage a playoff situation. And that's why I don't want him here. Because this team is expected to win. Regardless of what year it is, they have, we're, we're championship or bust regardless of the year. Just because of the city that they're playing in and the team that they are. If you don't trust your manager to in-game decisions, you know, the whole off-the-field stuff that happened earlier in the year um, with Price and Eck, managers should be able to control that. Managers should be able to control your players. That should never have gotten out. It should never have happened. I don't trust John Farrell to manage, manage his team into the playoffs, and he's going to screw something up in a series, whether it be something that makes you lose a game. I don't know if the players can win in spite of it, but there's going to be a decision in this Astros series that he's going to either, we're going to question and maybe they overcome the bad decision, but there's going to be something. I understand both sides of it. I understand the, the bad decisions that he's made, and then also he's, you know, three three AL East division titles back to back, both you know, first time in Red Sox history. So he's doing something. I know it's managers doesn't play the game, but it's the players. But still, he led that, and I'm starting to see over the last couple of weeks people starting to like write articles and talk and be like. Oh wait, maybe he's not so terrible. Look at how the success that this team's having, and you know, best one of the best bullpen ERAs. So like, I don't know. I think people like crapping on him just for sport at this point because it's so easy to do, and everyone just loves to seem to want to do that at this point. But he's costing us games, though, Jess. He's costing us games. It, it's a, no, but the, the there's like a consistent basis weeks. of. Doing that, and there's high pressure situations on record that he has visibly put the wrong pitcher in. And now, look, there, he has some tough decisions. I don't want to be in his shoes by any means because he, now he has to decide who he keeps off the playoff roster, which is a pain because they have some talented players they're going to have to keep off the roster, especially out of the bullpen. Um, but then once you make that decision, then you got to manage that the right way and put the right people in. Um, I don't know if Matt Barnes is going to be on the playoff rotation bullpen or not, but. Um, I don't know. I just don't trust John Farrell to manage this team consistently. Now, I think the team is good. I don't think he's going to lose his job, but I, I just still not a supporter. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I can see both sides, but I think he gets unnecessary heat, and there's no way you're firing him after another 93 win AL East. Title. Even if they get swept, even if they get swept out of the first round again. Yeah, I don't. I don't think Dombrowski would do it. I don't. I don't think. I don't Dombrowski think he get... Dombrowski doesn't want him here. I don't think he's a Dombrowski. I, I, I don't think, think Dombrowski does. wants him as a manager. I think the owners want him as a manager because no, I, Dombrowski's I, hit on history. Dombrowski likes his own guys, and he was here. And he he if he got his way, Farrell would have been done. I believe that wholeheartedly. But I feel like Dombrowski is such like a oh he makes his opinion and his voice heard. And I feel like if he really didn't want Farrell here, he wouldn't be here. Yeah, I think he said way too many times. I like him. He's my manager. He's doing a good job. He said that too many times to not believe it, I feel like. He yeah. seems like a pretty straight shooter to me. He's a straight shooter, but ownership has some kind of tie on these people. And I think, I hate to use it, but I think the cancer had a big thing of, you know, one, I, I still believe that Farrell wouldn't be here if he didn't have cancer. And I hate to put that out there, but I think it's true at this point because of the year they had before he got the cancer. And the way Lavulo managed his team, God, I'm still mad about that. He's killing it with Arizona. But... Look, I think I think Dombrowski is not his first choice. I think he's warmed up to. It. I think he's fine with Farrell now. He's seeing what he can do, and I think he he's finally has a good working relationship with him. But at the beginning, I don't think he wanted him here. Yeah, I don't know if he necessarily did right at the beginning, but after he saw him manage and spent some time here, I think he's wanted him here ever since. But see, the thing is, you're saying Tori Lavella is killing it in Arizona, blah blah blah. Same record. They both had 93 wins. Red Sox and Diamondbacks both had 93 and 69. So great, he's killing it. But in the same vein. Well, so is Farrell because his team has the same record. Mm-hmm. So, Lavulo also took like a 35 40 win team, the 90 something wins. 35 40 win team? <laughs> what, what are you with 40 and 120? <laughs> I'm trying to make my there. point. I'm just over exaggerating, Jess. Leave it alone. <laughs> We're talking about basketball here? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. Celtics are on my mind. No. Uh, I'm over exaggerating to make a point. But... Yes, I, I get your point. But whatever. Let's move on. 
this trial, this trial <laughs> conversation never goes well when it comes up on the show. Um, let, let's revisit the article because we do want to talk about the playoffs. That, that's important because it's the week before, and uh, this is a kind of a mini preview show to that too. But let's just go through the bowl predictions. I'll take I'll just do it just because he has it up probably in front of him right away, and he knows it like the back he of his does. head. So, um, Jess, just going to kind of go over the highlights of the, kind of the memorable ones besides the one you just read about yourself. Uh, of your Pomeranz. What else kind of stuck out that went well this year? <laughs> well, that was different. That was a player to watch for its own separate article, actually. But So I'll take credit in multiple places. Yeah, it was interesting this year because a lot of our categories, not the bull predictions, but just like the regular like the regular predictions, you know, team wins, Mookie bets, home runs, all that kind of stuff, a lot of them kind of don't really hold water anymore because, you know, one of them was David Price hits allowed, but, you know, he missed most of the season, so that doesn't really – makes sense anymore combined wins for poor solid price and sale that doesn't make as much sense with with price in the bullpen game started at third for pablo sandoval he isn't here that's, anymore that's so my that favorite one <laughs> <laughs> and like everybody was like yeah a bunch because he's gonna be great this year <laughs> whoops that didn't work out so well Seriously. so um and then carson smith era like we were expecting him to pitch three or four months not one so like that doesn't really hold much clay buckholtz wins for the phillies he pitched two games and then missed the whole rest of the season. So a lot of it doesn't really make much sense anymore. So I'll go over the stuff that actually does make sense. Mm-hmm. Um, team wins. Jess Thomas got it right. Thank you. Thank you. I'm bound. Right, right on the money. <laughs> Nobody else got it right. Everyone else was really close, like one or two or three off. But I said the team would win 93 games, and sure enough, they did. I said I think the same total of wins as last year is very attainable because the Sox got 93 wins last year too, exactly the same as this year, and that's exactly what happened. So... Thank you. I'll take full credit for that. I will admit I sucked on predictions this year. For each <laughs> week. I did way worse than last year, but I got team wins right. And I got Drew Pomeranz right. So we were going to have a jet. We had like a Jess tracker at the beginning of the year for that because you were so yeah. good last year. We're like we're going to see what he actually is this year, and yeah. then it just got so bad, Awful. so quickly. Terrible. I didn't do anything right this year, so I'm very happy that I at least got wins and and Pomeranz right. That makes me a little bit happy. Uh, a couple more of mine. Um, this is kind of a trend for everybody, but Rick Porcello wins. Our over-under was um, 18, and I picked 16. Most people picked like 14-plus, and obviously he got 11, so we all totally missed the boat on that one because he was way worse than anyone expected in terms of a record. So, you know, that's what happened there. Um, Mookie Betts, everyone missed this. Everyone was, was um, pretty right on this one, too. Not as right as it could have been. Our Mookie Betts tracker was uh, 40 for home runs because he had 31 last year, and it was like, well, maybe he'll get even more. Everyone said under, I believe. Uh, I said 28. He ended up getting 24, so that was fairly close, but most people were off on that because they still gave him too much credit because he only hit 24, which was less than most people thought. Mm -hmm. So kind of missed that one a little bit, but a little bit closer. Um, Some bold predictions. Um, I said Dustin Bedroy will get 100 RBI. He got 62, but he also missed a ton of time. He actually did really well in the RBI department for the games that he played. He just didn't play enough, so I'm going to take like partial credit on that because <laughs> if he played more games, I think it would have been better. Hanley only hit 13 home runs, as I mentioned. He hit 23, 24, but screw him anyway. And <laughs> I said Craig Kim will get hurt, and Joe Kelly will take over closer. That didn't work out so well. So good thing you know it didn't. That's a good thing. Yes, that's a very. I'm thrilled that didn't happen. Um, Lauren, do you want to go over yours? Or you want me to go over yours? I mean, I'll, I'll go over mine. Okay. Uh, I picked out a couple things on it, but I'm sure you'll hit those. So hit it. Yeah, I mean, wins. I was. I said 95. Um, close enough. But um, Mookie Betts. I said he was going to hit 35 home runs. Way off on that one. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Game started at third base for Pablo Sandoval. I said 130. <laughs> as, as in, like everybody else that didn't work out so well <laughs> um i liked what i said about my x factor um I that did. was i said it was going to be the bullpen i said we saw a lot of struggle from the pen last season from losing carson smith to craig kimbrell being injured but with the addition of tyler thornburg kimbrell and smith uh-huh. being healthy the bullpen is what's going to help this team win close games we know we can't always rely on our offense each and every game, so the bullpen will have to step up this season and not blow small leads. So, I think you were the bullpen right. minus Thornburg. Yeah, Thornburg. Yeah, but I think the bullpen was absolutely fantastic. Uh, my bold predictions: uh, David Price will win his first playoff game as a starter. It's already wrong. It's already, yeah, it's not going to happen. <laughs> it hasn't even started. <laughs> it's already uh, wrong. Jackie Bradley Jr. will be traded. <laughs> yeah, nope. Well, nope, not happening. Uh, and then Mookie Betts will be the American League MVP. Nope. Nope. 
Uh, way off, way off, but uh, that's what makes bold predictions fun. It is. But honestly, I wish I some part of me wishes that your Jackie Bradley Jr. prediction of being traded was true because one of our stats was that w- what Jackie's average would be. Our over under was two eighty five after hitting two sixty seven last year. Most people said under. I see that you said over, Lauren. But most people said under. But nobody said nearly as under as it was. He finished at two forty five because he finished the year absolutely terrible. He was like one for his last like 30 so maybe if he did get traded would be better off because his offense just still isn't there and he regressed from last year honestly but see i told you i mean the way i look at jackie bradley i always say like 250 i'm happy with because of the way he plays defense 245 right. i round up like that's close enough for me the way he yeah. plays defense the catches he was making this year the arm that he has he's a big anchor for that outfield not everyone hits 280 yeah. 290 if he can hit 245 250 i'm happy with his production this year should be better though, and I mean he oh, was. Of course, better it should be. I mean, but he's just one of those players that he'll hit three hundred and then hit two hundred. Then you know, what I mean, he he has his peaks where he'll go one for his last thirty, and then he'll hit. You know, what I mean, it's just. But when he's on, he has those yeah. weeks where he leads a team, which is fine. If your if your defense is as consistent as it is, and then maybe down the road you do trade him if you can't sign him. But yeah, he's just a little frustrating, but so be it. And Lauren, the other thing you got that I liked that you said was Craig Kimbrell being the breakout player because boy was he ever man he was oh, he, absolutely. <laughs> He killed it, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, Lars's predictions, uh, he said 95 wins, so a couple over as well. Um, we'll get to his bold predictions here. Actually, his X Factor was Craig Kimbrell, which is pretty good too. Breakout, Eduardo Rodriguez, not so much. Uh, he said Pablo Sandoval redeems himself by slugging 25 homers at least. That didn't happen. Kyle Kendrick becomes a regular in the starting rotation. That certainly didn't happen. Andrew Benintendi wins the batting title. That definitely didn't happen either, so 0 for 3 for Lars too. Uh, Nick Qualia, um, I liked his um, his breakout player being Sam Travis because he loves Sam Travis, but he played well when he was here. He just didn't play a whole lot, yep. so kind of hard to get that right, but he did play well when he was here. Uh, his bold predictions was Craig Kimbrell coming to form, be one of the top two closers in baseball. Absolutely. He certainly was. I'm not sure how bold that is, but he absolutely was. Pablo Sandoval at bat 290? Nope. Mm-hmm. Eduardo Rodriguez will be a sub-350 pitcher. Obviously, people are expecting some more out of Erod, and he kind of came up a little bit short this year, as did Sandoval, big time. There were a lot of a lot of Erod and a lot of Sandoval here, which just didn't happen, unfortunately. Um, Adam Blue, um, 92 wins. He was one off. Not bad. Um, getting to his, his uh, nitty-gritty. X-Factor Joe Kelly. Breakout player Eduardo Rodriguez again, another one. It's just like people were on the Erod train, and he just didn't didn't quite get it done as much as people wanted. Um, one bold prediction for Adam totally missed. Andrew Benintendi ends up back in the minors. Definitely not. Nope, not happen. even close. <laughs> didn't and he, he said it, he said it wouldn't be on a rehab stint, so he was basically right. implying that he was going to suck so bad that they didn't know what to do with him. Um, yes. I'm and really glad like that one was wrong. He was, like, confident in that prediction, too. He's like, give it to me. I yeah. like he just wanted him to fail. Like, no, that, that's that's my Benny. Be good <laughs> no, to him. It's Benny biceps, baby. Come on. Mm. I'm, sure, I'm sure he's feeling pretty bad about that one. And then his third one was King Felix joins Chris Sale in Red Sox rotation. That didn't happen either. But I will give Adam a lot of credit for his second bold prediction, which is Mitch Moreland will hit 30 home runs and 100-plus RBI. He didn't do that. But 22 and 79 is darn good and a lot closer than, like I said earlier in the show, a lot of people would think. So I give Adam credit for throwing Moreland out on that branch and giving him those those uh, numbers because he came pretty close. So I like that one. Yeah, he did. That one, that, that one was one that we probably all laughed at and was like, that's ridiculous. But he came a lot closer than we thought he would. Yeah, so I give him credit for that. Uh, Mike Setapani, who uh, left our coverage and came back, so he's still relevant. Um his bold predictions, well, his X factor was Andrew Benintendi, which is a great one because he yeah. really was. And um, breakout player Joe Kelly. A lot of people were on the Joe Kelly bandwagon, but didn't work out uh, the way they thought. His bold predictions, Erod will be an all-star starter. Nope. Joe Kelly will be the best reliever in baseball, taking over the job from Kimbrel, which is exactly what I said, and we laughed about that at the time. But that didn't happen either. But number two, Michael Setapani, Rafael Devers will be a regular starter by July. He nailed that. Yeah, I Nailed love that. it. Yeah, that was a good one. Which I totally didn't expect. I was like, there's no way he's coming up before September. And he came up July 24th. And yep. it was a regular start of the whole rest of the season. Unbelievable. So, got to give Mike a lot of credit for that one. Uh, and that ends ends us here with Nick Tasso, our last one, who's uh, not currently on the coverage anymore. But he said Ben Attendee was a breakout player. Got that right. On uh, his bold predictions, David Ortiz becomes a special instructor at some point with the team. Um, uh, he's not exactly that, but he did 
sign a deal with the team to do stuff. So yep. that's that was kind of right, actually, as it turned out. Uh, Erod wins 15 games. Uh, he won uh, six. That didn't work out. <laughs> he won uh, six. <laughs> and Dustin Pedroia has a huge regression from the 2016 season, which is the exact opposite of obviously what I said, getting 100 RBI. I wouldn't say it a huge regression. He just had some injuries but when he played he played really well so i think he was a little bit off on that one but that's your bold predictions overall um you know some of them were not likely to happen because of what happened with sandoval leaving and and uh things like that but a couple of good bold predictions a couple that were close and uh jess thomas for the win on the wins <laughs> love it <laughs> Yeah, so look, bold predictions were good, and I, and I love that, and some people got one right, and that's the best part about bold predictions, right, when the predictions actually come true. Um, so look, first part of the show brought to you by our good friends at FanDuel. You guys know it by now. We're into the season, and football is back, and it's fairly, FanDuel is just fancy football for everyday fans. You get new contests starting every week, no busted seasons, something for everyone, lots of contests to choose from, and just starting at $1, all you got to do is pick the contest, choose your team every week, and watch your score in real time, and uh, next week, I'm definitely going to be playing even more because I got screwed this week because I had Dalvin Cook on my roster in one of my big leagues, and he's now out for the year with a torn ACL. So, big thing is next week, you know, I, I have to fill in my holes, but with, with uh, FanDuel, I can log in, redraft the team. It's like Dalvin Cook wasn't even there, and I can play and potentially win some cash in the serious thing as well. So, uh, if you want to play against us, you can go to fanduel.com backslash Red Sox Beat. And, guys, um, I'm loving the interaction with the fans, and, you know, FanDuel's just a nice kind of week to week situation for us. Yeah, it's great because I have I had cooked too one of my season long leagues, so it's nice to be able to like, kind of go to FanDuel and be like, it's all right because next week I get a brand new team. I can not even worry about like setting it. It's and not to worry about injuries. And this year's what am been I the do? league of injuries this year too. It's been terrible. I don't even want to talk about it. <laughs> but isn't every year though? It's football. Everybody not, it's always been concerned. pretty bad though. Like, <laughs> it's the big, really the big bad games this are going year. down. You got David Johnson earlier in the year when he was drafted first mm. overall by like everybody. Uh, Julio Jones got hurt today. I don't know the extent of that one. Dalvin Cook and I have both of them. Like, there's a lot of ex- injuries, and I, I know Jess, you, you don't really play fantasy football outside of this, and you're loving FanDuel. It's kind of got you back into the swing of things too. I I am enjoying it, and I put Dalvin Cook on my team today. <laughs> and I'm like, ha ha, don't have to do that next week. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a great thing. You know, over two and a half million players right now have one cash prize playing fantasy sports on FanDuel. So what you're gonna do is sign up today. If you go to FanDuel.com, you click the Join Now button, and if you're new, use our code. It's Red Sox Beat. Uh, really, all you can do is try FanDuel for free with no deposit. You visit FanDuel.com to claim your free contest and play for a share of $10,000. Just sign up using the promo code, which is Red Sox Beat. All one word. That's FanDuel.com, promo code Red Sox Beat. Void where prohibited. And, guys, FanDuel's just been fantastic for us. And uh, like I said, with the Dalvin Cook injury, that's what I'll be doing next week make myself feel a little better. Um, but... You know, as much as I love football, playoff baseball season's here, guys. It's what it is. And uh, this upcoming week, a lot going on. Matchups are mostly set. You know, you have the wild card game starting Tuesday. Twins at, at, in the Bronx against the Yankees. And then the Rockies uh, at the Diamondbacks for the NL wild card. Um, Red Sox are playing Houston. Cubs are playing the Nationals. Um, and um, and um, you're waiting for the Indians series. You're waiting for the winner of that series. And then the Dodgers are waiting for the winner of the Rockies Diamondbacks. So, a lot to talk about here, and let's just start with the wild card games because we want to kind of talk about these. And let's start with the AL because that's relevant for us. Twins Yankees uh, first pitch is eight eight oh eight on Tuesday night. Um, guys, who's taking this game, um, and who who's, who gets to play the Cleveland Indians? The Minnesota Twins. Love it. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I mean, um, I'm not just saying that because I hate the Yankees. <laughs> I'm not saying it because I am super biased. I. I totally biased i know i just i feel like the twins have something going i feel like and in these one game playoffs you just never know what can happen um and i just feel like that the yankees this this really was supposed to kind of be a rebuilding year for them and i just think they're gonna throw it away in this one game playoff i mean they had plenty of chances to catch us and they had plenty of times to take over first first place and stay in first and they just couldn't hold on to it so I think the Twins are going to come out on top. I know, you know Aaron Judge and all that talk and whatever. I just think the Twins have a better shot at this. I think it's it's going to be a close game, but I think the Twins are going to come out on top. All right. Fair yeah. enough. Jess, what do you think? I got the Yankees. Um, as, much no. as, I don't, as much as I don't want to pick, <laughs> pick them. I mean, 91 win season is their best season in the last five years. Um, they really finished strong. They, you know, they kept they kept on the Red Sox heels, and they were right there waiting to uh, 
waiting to take over the division. The lead was just a little bit too big, fortunately, for the Sox. But they had a good season. They're 51 and 30 at home, which is really good. And obviously, they'll be home against the Twins because they're six games better. Twins also had a good end to the season, but they're the kind of team, you know, all these other teams have 90 plus wins, and they're sitting there at 85, a little dark horse. I think it, it, I think it will be a close game, but I just feel like the Yankees are a little bit too good, and they've had too good of a season to go out in the one game playoffs. So I got the Yankees. Yeah, I'm with Jess on this one. I hate to be, but um, the reason is it's going to be Severino on the mound because um, he, you know, he was he was scheduled to pitch. The 163, if they really needed to, against the Red Sox. So, um, he, he, I think they announced that, but he is the one probably pitching on. He's the one pitching on Tuesday, and that dude is just a stud. Um, and as much as I want to pick the Twins, and they've been playing good baseball, I have to think the Yankees are going to win this game because of that. It's at home. Uh, twins have been a great year, but I think they're just going to run into Severino, and that's going to be a problem. So, um, I have the Yankees going on to take on the Indians. Let's hop over to the NL Wild Card game: Rockies, Diamondbacks, Division Foes going at it uh, for the right to play the Dodgers. So um, let's start with Jess. Jess, uh, who, who's got that game on Wednesday night? I really wanted to pick the Rockies, but I'm going to Diamondbacks. Just just as the Yankees, they've had a really good season. Even better than the Yankees, record-wise, they got 93 wins. And they just, they've had a great season. They've been overshadowed by the Dodgers and how many wins they got, obviously, with 104. But Diamondbacks have been one of the best teams in the league. The Rockies had a great season, too, and they got some studs, and their offense scares me with Arenado, Charlie Blackman, both with 100-plus RBI. So I really wanted to pick the Rockies, but I just feel like the Diamondbacks have the slight edge, so I'm going Diamondbacks. I think also a close game. If they can hold off the offense, they've got it, but it's dangerous. It could be close. It could go either way. Yeah, I think both these wild card games are going to be close. But I mean, you know, those four teams are good teams. They've had good years, and I can't imagine either of them getting really torched in these games. But um, I'm going with the Diamondbacks too. Um, I, I like what, like I said, I like what Tori Lavua did with the, that team this year, and they've just been so under the radar because of the Dodgers. And if it wasn't for the Dodgers, the, the way they started the year, they could have won that division. They would have been right there with them. And so I think it'll be a close game. I wouldn't be surprised if the Rockies do win, but uh, I'm going with the Diamondbacks. Yeah, I'm right there with you. We're all in agreement on this. I think that the Diamondbacks do have a slight edge despite, you know, Blackman and Arenado. I know they're extremely dangerous weapons for the Rockies, but I just feel the the, the Diamondbacks are just the better team in this situation. I think Lovulo's done wonderful things with this team, and I think it's just going to continue into the playoffs and be on the wild card. Love it. No, So there you go. If everything goes to majority rules in these, in these votes, so let's say the Yankees move on. Uh, um, and the, so they'll take on the Indians by the majority, and the Diamondbacks will take on the Dodgers. So let's start with, um, let's just go in order when they start. So let's start Red Sox Astros, um, and we talk about this series, guys, and we've seen them play a little bit here the last couple, you know, nights, and it, there's, there, there's been some games where you felt like it was a playoff game, and I expect this series to be a good series. I, I expect. Um, this series to be a really good one. You have Chris Sale in his first playoff start on Thursday ever, so I think him, he's going to be a dog coming in. Uh, Drew Pomeran should be expect to be good, but you have Justin Verlander and, and Keuchel on the other side. So I hate to do this, but I, I think the Astros take this series because I, I think the way they're the way they've been playing all year. I think the addition of Justin Verlander just makes it too much for this Red Sox team, um, and I think overall. And I hate to use it, but you know they're they're riding high off, motivating off playing for their city, and that's an impact, right? That's a big thing. The Red Sox won in 2013 playing for the city of Boston after everything that happened. And I think that's a big factor. Um, I'm picking Houston in this series. Yeah, it's without a doubt a big factor. I mean, we've seen it time and time again, not just with Boston, but with New Orleans when the Saints won the Super Bowl after Hurricane Katrina, and just we know that like you know natural disasters and times of like really bad the terrorist attacks and everything kind of brings the city together and they kind of take comfort in sports and you know as much as i have enjoyed watching the astros this year and enjoyed watching them get those 100 wins um i love jose altuve but i really think the red sox are going to come out on top i don't think it's going to be easy it's going to go four or five games like without a doubt but i think the red sox have the slightest edge and i think it's just they're going to they're going to really click. This offense is going to click the the pitching, the the bullpen especially. And what really kind of keeps me positive is that bullpen because, you know, we saw Hector Velasquez go four scoreless innings today. We've seen them go long uh, stretches in games. So I feel like, God forbid, Chris Sale or Drew Pomeranz crops the bed only can go three or four innings. We know that bullpen can get in there and just kind of keep that team afloat. 
I like it. Yeah, you know, this is going to be a good, really good series. We obviously got a little preview this weekend with the Astros winning three out of four, but obviously today's game didn't matter. Um, I'm going Red Sox. And not because yeah. I'm, hom- I'm a homer, although I am. <laughs> you are. We all uh, are, I'm technically. Actually, I'm, actually, I'm going Red Sox in four, even though the Astros are the home team. Um, I think Chris Sale is going to kill it on Thursday. I think he's saving it for the playoffs, and the Astros haven't seen him, and that benefits him big time. Yeah. So I think he's going to win game one, and I have full confidence in Pomerantz to win game two, and we just saw him throw a great game against the Astros yesterday. Yep, that is true. So... I feel really good about the first two games, and I think if you take a 2 nothing lead in Houston, which is going to be difficult, but that's what it would be, then you just got to win one game with one of these other guys, you know, whether that's Sale and Short Rest, like we said earlier, or, or Pomerantz in the fifth game or whatever, or get a sweep and just somehow, you know, maybe one of those guys will just pull out pull out a win here in the third game. So I, I say Red Sox in four. It all comes down to the first two games. I mean, if the Astros win the first two, you know, probably forget it because <laughs> – you know, this, the pitching <laughs> starting isn't good enough for that. But I'm I'm b- banking on a two nothing lead going back to Boston, and if that happens, absolutely Red Sox. Yeah, and I, and I think you know, in my eyes, home field doesn't matter as much in baseball as it does in other sports, unless you're Matt Barnes <laughs> for some reason. Um, <laughs> but look, I I, I think th- I said I'm going to pick the Astros. I think they're going to win in five. I think if it does have if the Red Sox have an opportunity to close it out in four, I think they do it. Because that's that's where they have to win. I don't think they win in a game five. Um, so I, I'm, I'm picking Houston in five. That is like the official thing. But we'll go majority, like I said. So we'll move the Red Sox along um, if, we're, if, we're, if that's how we're going to want to handle this. But um, Well, you can pick it how you think it's going to be if you want to do that. I don't know because, I, I mean, I just – I don't know how I mean, we can we can do either way. I, I just think that you yeah, know, you can do you can do Lauren with the uh, the twins versus the versus okay. the uh, the Indians. I okay. think that works. Okay, perfect. So we'll do that. Um, so let's go. Let's go to that. Let's go to that game series. Let's go hop across here. So uh, for Jess and I, it's Yankees and um, against the Indians. Indians. I don't think any of us are going to pick against the Indians, but uh, for me, it's it's Indians pretty quickly. In my opinion, this team is still hot. This team is riding something, and if um, I'm picking them in four because it's postseason baseball and something happens most times. Um, but I really wouldn't be surprised if they sweep the Yankees. Okay. Um, I guess I'll go next since I have the same the yep. same series. Here's my shocker of the show. I'm picking the Yankees. Ooh. Yeah, I'm picking the Yankees. As much as I don't want to because I hate the Yankees, I feel like they're a dark horse. I feel like they had a pretty good team, and they managed 91 wins this year when no one expected them to. Obviously, they could just fizzle out and you know not be as good in the playoffs, but for some reason, I'm just feeling like they're going to be better than people expect, and I feel like the Indians peaked too early. I feel like they're not going to play as well. They're going to be... They're not going to be quite as hot, even though they obviously have 100 plus wins. This could be totally ridiculous, but I am—I'm <laughs> even going crazy for it. I'm saying, uh, I'm saying Yankees in five. Oh wow, that's a Yankees Red Sox <laughs> ALCS people. If you're paying attention at home, yes, to write it, it down. Is. Thank you. Thanks for pointing that out. <laughs> that's... Yankees in five. Lawrence picking them to lose in the wild card. I'm picking them to go to the ALCS. Lauren, Twins versus Indians. What do you got? As much as I want to say the Twins, I just can't go against the Indians. I mean, I, I if the Twins can beat the Yankees, I don't think they're getting past the the Indians. They, I mean, we know what the Indians have done this year. We know what they did last year. We know they're hungry for that World Series. They want to get back there, probably just if just as much, if not more, than any other team in this playoff. So, I mean, I, as much as I want to do the shocker of the show and pick the Twins to go to the uh, ALCS, I don't. I don't see them beating the Indians at all. So Indians, <laughs> Indi- Indians in four. Love that. Uh, big supporter of Tito. Always have been, always will be. So um, there you go. So ALCS, we'll move, we'll move there. We'll predict the ALCS, and then we'll go over to the NL side. So for me, in my ALCS version, I have Indians-Astros, which I think is a prediction for a lot of people. I think that's kind of what's expected here uh, around the league. Um, I'm picking the Indians. Indians are going to the World Series. I don't care who they play in the LCS. They're going to the World Series. Uh, this team is better than they were last year. Um, they're starting to figure it out. They obviously had the win streak, and towards the end of the year, their pitching stepped up, and now they're hitting the crap out of the ball. And uh, This team is meant to go back to the World Series, and, and uh, this, this team is doing that for sure. Uh, if they're playing against the Astros, I have them winning the ALCS in six games. Um, I think the Astros are a very good team, uh, but I don't think the Indians will need seven to take care of it. Wow. So boring. It's, it's, it's the right choice. They're such a good Where, baseball your, team. 
Where's your hard hitting predictions like the Yankees going to the LCS? Come on. I, I got one on the NL side. Don't worry. Wait till the NL side. All right, comes. great. Oh, I'm so excited. I can't wait for the NL side. I'm kind of excited. <laughs> it's a lot well, over there. First. I'll let you go first with your LCS before I go. So you have Indians, Red Sox. I do. And this is where it gets tricky because the Indians are so good. And I hate going against the Red Sox. I said on a roundtable with Nick Qualia that the Red Sox are going to win the World Series. You also and, said it before the season. You and say I did it all say the time. You said this. it all year. Like. <laughs> I've said it for the last 28 years of my life. So um, as much as it pains me to say this. <laughs> oh, he's coming I'm, off of it. <laughs> I am picking the Indians. What? And Whoa. my heart. Yep, What's wrong with you? Shocker of the show, guys. My heart just wow. like broke with me saying that. Um, my friend Zach is going to be through the moon when he listens <laughs> and he hears me say that. So I, I know. I just, I as much as I want to see the Red Sox get past the Indians, I don't think they have it in them. And I, it's not that the Red Sox aren't a good team. They obviously are. But like I said, you know, two minutes ago, the Indians are hungry. They want this more than probably anybody in this playoffs. And it's this whole season has just been a dream season for them. So I'm, I'm unfortunately going against the Red Sox, which I hardly ever do. So put that one down. As, uh, <laughs> put that in the book. Especially after what like, happened last year. You know they're hungry. Oh, yeah. Wow. I know. I'm sure. I thought my Yankees thing was a big shock. <laughs> Seriously, I think that's that might top that. All right, Jess. Uh, the big old Red Sox Yankees ALCS. It's coming. Red Sox Yankees ALCS. How cool would that be? That'd be fun. After after 200 win teams with the Astros and the Indians, if it was Red Sox Yankees, that'd be so uh, I think, fun. I think it's going to be a great series. I think it's going seven. I think it's going to be really competitive, and the teams have both played each other well this year. You know, the Yankees had a good start to the season. Red Sox kind of finished the season well against the Yankees. So. There's no way I can pick a Red Sox Yankees ALCS and pick the Yankees. So I'm obviously <laughs> going to Red Sox. Red Sox in seven. So I am also going against my bold pre- my prediction before the season in our in our bold prediction segment because I picked the Red Sox to lose in the ALCS. I didn't say they were going to play, but I said they were going to lose in the ALCS. And now that I've mapped out my postseason uh, prediction here, I'm going Red Sox in seven to go to the World Series. Love it. Wow. So we, we all have our... World Series from the AL. Now, let, let's shift over to the NL because this is where things get interesting, right? You know, a lot of our listeners are Red Sox fans, are more AL Central people. Uh, not a lot of NL games are watched except for, you know, when Red Sox can get a chance to play some of them so on and so forth. So, you know, the three of us picked the Diamondbacks. They're going to t- play the Dodgers. Let's start there. Uh, Diamondbacks, Dodgers. Now, this is where, for me, I'm picking the Diamondbacks, guys, because the Dodgers – have been playing like crap lately. Like, they fell off. I don't know what happened. And, you know, they kind of backed into the best record in baseball because of the way they played most of the year. But this Diamondbacks team, like we said, has been so overlooked because of the way the Dodgers were playing in their division. They really had no chance to catch them. I think the Diamondbacks win this series against the Dodgers in six games. I think the Diamondbacks are hungry. I think they have a great manager. I think they have a great leadership. You know, Goldie's still there. And this team has been so underrated all year because of the Dodgers. I think they're going to go in there and take it to the Dodgers. I got Diamondbacks in six. Wait, I, uh, the NLDS? So wouldn't that be five? Or five. No, four. Right. Excuse me. Right. You're right. Four. 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 I'm, I'm skipping ahead. Okay. So you say the Diamondbacks win three of the four games. I mean, four. Wait. <laughs> wait, isn't the first round five games? Five games. Yeah, so, so Diamondbacks so, in three. No, Diamondbacks in four. Three. Right? You gotta win three of five. Yeah, but I'm saying right. it, it takes them four games to do it. <laughs> Math is hard, guys. Yeah, it is. I'm really confused. <laughs> no, oh, yeah. Right. Okay. Max games, five games. Right. They're gonna win in four. So they win three out of four. Okay, you're right. Sorry. Yes. yes. Confusion. Yes. Diamondbacks <laughs> in four. Diamondbacks in four. We were both right. I was right yes. and then wrong. Yeah, so. and same yeah. here. So, Diamondbacks and four. Just Excellent. Go. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, you know what? Me too. I'm picking the Diamondbacks to beat the Dodgers as well. Screw the Dodgers. They were having <laughs> 104 wins. And they, they had a great season, and they could have had the most wins ever, and then they decided to go lose 15 out of 16. I'm not a fan of that losing 15 out of 16 stuff. That's that's bad. So I think they're going to come in and crash. The Diamondbacks are hungry. They're going to beat the Rockies. They're going to be hungry. So I'm picking Diamondbacks in five. Love it. I am picking, I am picking Diamondbacks as well. I'm going uh-huh. Diamondbacks in four. Um, say so I don't like Jess, you said it. I don't like the the losing fifteen out of sixteen. I don't see them really kind of bouncing back from that. That's that's a huge losing streak when you look at what they accomplished before that, what they could have accomplished if they just continued to play baseball really well. And 
I think the Diamondbacks are doing something incredible, and I think Tor Lavulo knows how to how to do it, and he's going to do it, and they're going to win in four. Yep, love it. Okay, so we're all in agreement. Diamondbacks moving on. Let's hop over to the other series, Cubs, Nationals. Nationals have home field in this series. Um, right back to you, Lauren. Cubs, Nationals. What do you got? Nationals are going to sweep the Cubs. Whoa! <laughs> shot to my heart. Great segment we got going. Here. <laughs> Um, I don't want to go against the Cubs. I love Lester, love Lackey, you know, but, you know, they had their time. They had their time last year. And as much as, as fun as the Cubs were to watch this year, the Nationals have been really fun too. And it's just, it's time for the Nationals to do something. I feel like every year, is it they just, it is, it is because they were so bad for so long and then they start getting good. And then now it's like, they just need to do something. And I just kind of see the Cubs fizzling out. They've struggled this season. And I think it's time, like I said, that the Nationals need to do something. So I'm picking the Nationals to sweep your World Series champions from last year. Jess? Wow. Beautiful. Yeah, I got the Nationals too. Not a sweep. I got them in, uh, in five. I think it'll be a good series. But yeah, it's just the, uh, the Cubs just weren't as good this year. They struggled. They were in second, third place for a little while. And then they jumped into first with a couple months left and held that. But, it's you know, they're just... They're not as strong as they were. 92 wins is still good, but they're just not to that caliber that they were last year, and I just don't see them getting past the Nationals. The Nationals have a really good team. And like you said, Lauren, someday they're going to win a playoff <laughs> series and do something. Someday. And I think that this series, they will do that. So I got Nationals in five. I got Cubbies in five. Wow, um, I, knew, I knew it. Look, this I can't believe the Nationals are going to win anything in the playoffs so they actually do it. And they've had so <laughs> many chances with with really good teams, guys. Like they've done that. We've seen this story over and over again. And every year we're like, oh, they got to do it at some point. I, I don't believe this team until they see it. And I could be wrong here with the prediction, but Cubbies in five because the Cubs now have history of getting over that hump with this core. They have got leaders who have been there, have won multiple championships. They have the young core who you know they started to play better as of late. I got the Cubbies in five moving on. Um, and, Fair and, enough. I, and I think it's just because of the fact that the Nationals might crap themselves again. Um, so you two have in the NLCS, you have Diamondbacks and against the uh, lovely Washington Nationals. I, must, I just came and I smile saying that out loud. And uh, I have Diamondbacks Cubs. So let's start with me so we can get that out of the way. Diamondbacks Cubs um, before you guys go with yours. Uh, I have Diamondbacks beating the Cubbies. They're going to the World Series. Diamondbacks are going to the World Series, guys. Um, I think this is where the Cubs are a little overmatched. Um, I think the Diamondbacks win the NLCS in five games because the Diamondbacks have been consistent all year. They're ready to go. This Diamondbacks team is going to surprise some people, guys. They, I love the way they play. They're they're fun to watch, and like I said, underrated all year. They're going to be they're going to be overlooked throughout the playoffs, and they're gonna they're gonna sneak into the World Series, guys. That would suck if they lost to the Rockies in the wild card game. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm banking so much on them winning on Wednesday, but like it's okay. <laughs> Dangerous. Yep. All oh right. yeah. Uh, um, I'm I'm right there with you. The Diamondbacks are going to the World Series, and <laughs> I think Riding that they're train. they're kind of like no pun intended. I think they're kind of the wild card in the series, and I think that they're just. They're they're surprising a lot of people. Like you know, they had thirty wins last year, so it's just <laughs> <laughs> just just for them to turn around. Oh, thirty and one thirty. I was making a point. <laughs> Keep going. Just for them to turn around, like turn the season around, and under Lavulo, and you know, obviously we have a soft spot for Tor Lavulo out there. So I think the Diamondbacks are going to make it to the World Series this year, and hopefully they do not get out of that wild card game. Yes. The Diamondbacks had 69 wins last year, not 30. Oh, <laughs> so, Rob Gronkowski wins. Just, Love that. Just quit. Yes, he's getting a lot, Gronk's a lot, a lot of things tonight. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> me too, guys. I got the Diamondbacks also yeah, going to the World we're Series. we're on the train. <laughs> we're on the train. Uh, I got Diamondbacks in six. And for the record, everyone, we picked these before the show, so we're not just sitting here agreeing with each other. No, so yeah, we did this, this way before this the show. This is exciting. Yeah. It's fun. I got Diamondbacks in six, and the Nationals will fizzle out because they're not made for the playoffs, even though they will win the first series, hopefully. Uh, so I got Diamondbacks in six, Toro Lovello into the World Series after a 30-win season last year. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So yeah, Diamondbacks in the World Series, which, if you guys realize, with my predictions, Red Sox versus Diamondbacks, Farrell versus Lovello. Oh, that would, would make uh, my heart so happy. You didn't pick that. What's wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, that would be fun to watch. All right, so Jess has Red Sox, Diamondbacks. Uh, Lauren and I have Indians, Diamondbacks, if I'm keeping track at home correctly here. Um, so let's start with Jess. World Series prediction. You have Red Sox, which I laugh at. You have Diamondbacks. Who see, wins? The Red Sox. Did, 
the Red Sox didn't have to beat the Indians because they beat the Yankees. This is true. You have John Farrell versus Tori Lavulo, 1.0, first matchup. Who wins and why? Red Sox in seven. Oh, yeah. well, so this Boston Red Sox. Yeah. For one reason. You always pick the AL over the NL. The NL sucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> so man. that's that's my reason. I think that for the Diamondbacks to get that far after a 30-win season last year, you know, to get to the World Series with their 93-win uh, season last year, uh, this year, I'm going to keep riding you on that. <laughs> I, I was making a point. I, think, I did it on purpose. After a 69-win season last year, I think that that would be the point they get to, and then they're going to lose because they're not going to have the firepower at that point. If the Red Sox do manage to get to the World Series, I think they're going to want to go in all in as they have the other three times, you know, winning all three of the World Series they've been they've been in. It's going to yeah. continue. They're not losing in the World Series. They always win in the World Series. See, that's one thing I agree with. If they get there, they're winning. Yes. They just got to get. Go. They just got to get there. <laughs> Bring on those Yankees. <laughs> all right. Uh, Red Sox well, seven. All right, Red Sox and seven for Jess. Lauren, uh, Indians, Diamondbacks. Who do you got? Got the Indians. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, the uh, the AL over the NL any day. Um, I just, I mean, I, I can repeat, repeat myself a hundred times over. The, the Indians are hungry. They want to finish what they started last year. I love Tito. I just, I love... Miss Tito. I, I, I miss Tito so much. You just can't go against him. And he says hilarious words in interviews like behooved. And it's, it's, it's really hard not to like the Indians and kind of look at their season as a whole and realize what they've accomplished, what they've really done since last season. It's really hard to get into the playoffs, make the world series and then get back into the playoffs. You know, they talk about the world series hangover, you know, and essentially they have pretty much the same team, but it's still like, it just because they had the same team doesn't mean they're going to duplicate what they did last year. Even that's what they're doing right now. So I think they have a really good shot at winning the world series. And I just, I think if the, if it's diamondbacks Indians, I don't see the diamondbacks kind of really standing a chance against Cleveland. Yeah, I am. I'm in the same boat. I, I got Indians winning it. You know, after, after losing last year, the way they did, I think they have a huge chip on their shoulder and they, they want to kind of come back and avenge that loss. And I can't vote against Tito by any means, but um, I have honestly, I had the Indians sweeping the World Series. To be a hundred percent honest, um, <laughs> wow! I, I, I don't That's even care. I, honestly, I don't even know who they play. Um, I think they're sweeping regardless of who comes in from the NL because they are just they are so hot right now. They have that complete roster. They are a motivated baseball team under a manager who knows what it's like to sweep a World Series. So he knows what it takes to have that team there. He knows what it takes to be a leader, and you know. Tito's one of the better managers to ever kind of manage in this game, and I think by far, whoever they play, but it's going to be Indians over Diamondbacks uh, in four. I don't think the World Series... I mean, there'll be good games. I don't think they're going to be blowouts, but I, I think the uh, Indians take home the crown with a sweep of the World Series. So, um, Wait, Lauren, did you give your number of games for the World Series? No. Uh, six. Indians six. in six. six. Love it. Six, five, or six. I just love the fact got, that we're all on the Diamondbacks ones. train. This is great. I know. I know this is not what I expected. All right, shock of the show. Diamondbacks maybe win the World Series. Who knows? But uh, so Jess has the, Red, the Jess Series. has the Re- <laughs> Jess has the Red Sox going to the World Series. Uh, we all have the Diamondbacks going to the World Series. Hopefully they win the wild card game. We'll all kind of look like idiots. But um, yeah, we will. <laughs> that being said, guys, a long show this week. Don't even care because there was a lot to talk about. There and, was a lot of fun, and we got playoff baseball this week, which is great. Also, kind of sad because it means one week closer to the end of the season and back to half hour shows in winter winter time, which is very depressing. But that being said, enjoy the playoff baseball. Um, don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Red Sox underscore beat. Facebook is the same thing. Uh, of course, you can rate and review and subscribe to us on iTunes. Uh, that'd be amazing. Share the word. Uh, big shows coming up as we get to the playoffs. Red Sox first pitch Thursday in the playoffs. Enjoy, enjoy it. Chris Sale playoff baseball is first. His I first playoff start, um, <laughs> and this is the last show that Jess will be on as a bachelor, as he is getting married next week, uh, which will be very exciting. We will tweet. I'll, I'll live tweet his wedding. I don't even care. I'm going to be there, so um, I might send some live pictures. Look for the pictures. Look for the pictures. Follow me on Twitter. I'll be posting pictures all night. Yep. So keep an eye on that. We'll we'll be uh, broadcasting pictures and everything from his his, his wedding, which is crazy. He's getting married. Uh, and the next year they'll probably do the same nice. thing for me. So uh, we'll be back next yeah. week. Jess, are you on next week? Are you around next week or no? No, I don't think I'm going to do the show as I leave for my honeymoon. Okay. <laughs> you, you never know. So, all right. So we'll be back next week. Lauren and I will be doing the show. Uh, maybe we'll grab a third. Who knows? So stay tuned for that. But until then, go Red Sox. Playoff baseball on the horizon. And don't forget to uh, go follow us on Twitter. Until next week for the 
a, a very new married this week, Jess Thomas and Lauren Campbell. Uh, I am Jared Scally. This has been Red Sox Beat here on CLNS Media.